Hello and welcome to Draw and Talk and on this episode I have my friend Jack here and she's going to tell me a bit about some Kirby lore that I don't know anything about. <laughs> yeah, hello, that's me. The the semi Kirby expert. So, I I want firstly I want your opinion on what I've drawn because um I don't actually know anything about Kirby, so I'm hoping this is a somewhat decent representation of them. Oh yeah, it's all pretty good. Like, if you go on their personalities, <laughs> down pat pretty much. Like, King Dedede's... King Dedede is, like, supposed to be the villain in some games, but he kind of just comes off as, like, kind of a jerk. Yeah, is that all? You know, pretty, like, he's not like, you know, Ganondorf or, like, you know, Ridley or anything from Metroid... Like, who are, like, you know, super violent, like, wanted to take over the world and, like, shit like that. It's, like, King Dedede is just like, yeah, I'm gonna steal this food. <laughs> or just, like, be a, be a slight inconvenience to Kirby. Really? Like, so that's his whole deal? Pretty much. Like, ha like half the time he's ever, like, a big threat in any of the games is when he's, like, being possessed by some other enemy. And what would that those other enemies be? Uh, well, there was a boss in, I think it was Kirby Triple Deluxe for the 3DS, where uh, he got brainwashed by this, like, uh, spidery, uh, kind of, like, henchman to the bigger villain. And they pretty much just, like, put King Dedede in a, like, in a metal mask, and that was about it. And they just made him try and beat up Kirby, but that didn't go well. I think I saw that on Google Images. Yeah. The metal uh, mask thing. Yeah, that was mostly for that fight. Um, he wears it in Super Smash Bros. for his, like, uh, ultimate smash, where he just, like, puts you in the fucking, like, wrestling cage and beats your ass. And is is that something that he'd uh, do in the mainline Kirby games? Uh, I think it only really showed up for that game when he was, like, brainwashed in that way. It might... Well, no, I think in Planet Robobot, um, he was still brainwashed there, but they don't, I don't think he, like, I don't think they, like, put any, like, fancy, like, metal stuff on him. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to start with a hot take on this, uh, whole Kirby episode. Oh, well, go ahead. Uh, oh, yeah, your, <laughs> your boyfriend might, like, hate the hot take. Oh. But, um, I was gonna say, uh, Kirby and Dark Souls is pretty similar, at least lore related. I actually think my boyfriend would love that hot take. Oh yeah? Yeah, because he, he was, when I told him that I was going to do this episode, he was like, oh, I love Kirby. I've always wanted to just talk about Kirby forever. Oh yeah. So... Well, see, I was mostly saying that just because it's like, both Kirby and Dark Souls have it to where it's like, they're two completely games, two different like completely different games if you like play them just on like the surface level versus like if you look into them oh yeah exactly yeah because both games you can play through the entire game and after it's over be like what the hell just happened <laughs> and then like you play through it again and like either you know with dark souls you look at the item descriptions or like you know armor descriptions and that kind of thing but then at least for like later on kirby games when you pause the screen during a uh, like boss fight or other big encounter, it'll like give you lore about like that boss or like like uh, the situation you're in, that kind of thing. All right, I I do love that they put in lore like that. And did you want to go into some of uh, some of the deep lore? About... Oh boy, do I! <laughs> so. Um, oh god, where do I start? So, did you know Earth is a canon thing in the Kirby universe? Okay, I think I might have vaguely remembered that, but only because you've told me before, I think. Okay, so Earth is a canon thing in the, like, you know, Kirby lore universe, but only because it's fucking, like, iced over and just dead. Whoa. Yeah, so... You, I think, I think the level only really appears in Kirby sixty four for the you know Nintendo sixty four, where you get there 
and even just like looking at the overview of the world it, it's literally just earth but like frozen over um and you start the like i think it's like four levels on that world and they're all just like machinery related and there's like no living enemies on the planet there's like only robots and that kind of thing and um do they explain they... why earth is in that state they didn't in that game really, but in Kirby Super er, Superstar Allies, the latest one for the Switch, um, I think it's revealed that whenever you fight the final boss of that game and like the priest in the game who summons that boss, um, it's revealed that, or at least it's heavily implied that um, Earth went through a crisis where they couldn't decide. Like, they were fighting over, like, you know, machinery or, like, magic. Like, you know, what's more like you know what's more powerful, what should be, like, the ruling force of the world and stuff. Mm. And that eventually led to them accidentally summoning a fucking, like, you know, world-ending, like, god. Oh. That, yeah, that just kind of destroyed the Earth and all life on it. And so... And so... Yeah. Yeah, and so the priest you fight in Superstar Allies, like, just before that boss, um, you know, worships that god. And is like, you know, that was pretty dope, actually. Let's bring that back. So, they have their own religion based around it. Pretty much, yeah. Like, the, the priest who worships him isn't human. He's, uh... Honestly, he kind of looks like Squidward, with, like, pointy ears. <laughs> Um, and, like, just before, like, you fight him, he goes on this, like, minute-long rant where the text is just, like, really sped up and not spaced together. Or, like, you know, not spaced apart. And, like, in that, he's talking about how, like, you know, how how dare you fight the priest of, like, the mighty lord. Uh, like, you know, strikes down planets and all fear him and, you know, all that. And, like, the only way you would ever see that if you, like, is if you, like, recorded it and, like, paused on every time he did that. So they put text in the game that you actually have to, like, find a way to pause on it to actually read. Oh, yeah. Well, because it's mostly just because, like, that boss is, like, just, just kind of just off the off the wire a bit. So he's just talking really fast and just very pissed off at you in general. Because, like, you know, like, leading up to that guy, you kill his, like, three main generals. That, make, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Can I ask, just for like a bit of context, what what would the gameplay be in that boss and in Kirby in general? Uh, well, all, all pretty much all of the Kirby games, besides like some of the spinoffs, are um, like two D platformers. Mm -hmm. um, but for that, but for that boss, um, it's actually uh, oh God, what is it? It's like one of those um, on the rail like shooter kind of like plane games, you know, like you're controlling a plane and you can move it around the screen, but like the general direction it's going in is set. You know what I mean? Um, like tank controls or? No, not tank controls. It's like um, <sighs> the only game I can think about it is uh, like Kid Icarus for the 3DS. Have you played that? I've I've seen gameplay for that, and I think I get like, okay. Where you yeah, yeah, it's from. like the, it's like the flying sections of that, yeah. Yeah. So, like the boss is uh, like a few stories tall. Like I can, I can I can look up a picture of him real quick and send it to you, and like maybe you can maybe you can put it on the screen for context or something. Sure. Yeah. That um, sounds good. Man, yeah, the main part of that boss fight is you know doing that and doing enough damage to him until um he falls to the ground and his like uh, mask falls off and then you go inside of him and fight his like you know spirit pretty much his spirit um yeah pretty much like his spirit slash like heart it's not it's not too explained you know you just kind of mm -hmm. go in you go inside of him and that's there and it's like oh okay i guess i'm killing this thing now yeah uh, but yeah, the god is called Void Termina. That's, that's a cool name. Well, yeah, pretty much every single, like, pretty much 
like most of the final bosses or otherwise you fight in Kirby are some kind of version of like world ending boss or like ancient god. All of them and... except uh this this lad King Dudu. 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 Oh yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Many Dudu. Yeah, pretty much. Like I either either the final boss is like, especially in the early games, the final boss is usually just, like, King DDD or, like, some other big enemy. Mm. Um, I think in one of the early games you fight a boss, like, the final boss called a Dark Matter. Which is, as you can assume, a giant, like, space-traveling god that just kind of goes and I think he tries to, like, brainwash every living thing on whatever planet he comes to. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like one of those alien situations where it's like, hey, y'all are out of order. I'm just going to, like, make you all a hive mind with me. So there's no chaos in the universe, that kind of thing. Yeah, those are, those are some interesting sci-fi tropes to be in this game. Yeah. And I'm also going to send a picture of what uh, Void Termina's um, soul looks like. Because you, sure you might find it a little familiar looking. Um, oh. So as you can see, uh, Void Termina's soul looks a lot like Kirby. It does. I'll put it. I'll put it up here, so people can see what it looks like. Yeah, and uh, I think the, the lore implications and reasons behind that is that there have been like multiple Void Terminas and um, other variations of him throughout different timelines. All right. And. Uh, Kirby is a void Termina that just chose to be nice. That's... That's that's really cute. <laughs> yeah, like he just kind of... And his form just kind of like built around that. Whereas the void Termina you fight is, you know, obviously a giant buff as hell like world ending thing. And so, like, is it ever explained why, um... Like, why Kirby is our hero, our protagonist. Well, see, that's the other thing, is that, like, it, it, the games like to give you all this weird implication and, like, other weird little lore bits like that, but then mm. not explain it at all. So, is it, like, picky and choosy about what it explains? Pretty much. Like, I think the most reasoning we have for what Kirby is came, comes from uh, the TV show kirby right back at you where it's just like kirby just kind of showed up on pop star one day and obviously since you know he can't communicate they're just like oh okay well he's nice and helpful so whatever do, do you want to so, talk more about what um that show is about uh pretty much it, it, it's, it's pretty much just like what you would expect from like a video game tie-in tv show where it's like you know, King Dedede's, like, the ruler of the village that Kirby mm. shows up in. And he's just doing his usual, like, greedy hijinks. Like, um, I think there was a YouTube reanimated collab of an episode where they reanimated an episode of um, King Dedede trying to, like, get everybody in town to, like, make a show about him. Mm-hmm. And it, it was straight up just a parody of Kirby's show. Like, um, the like the main opening line for Kirby's like theme song for it is like you know Kirby 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 he's the here like you know something like that, and the theme for King Duty Choose is like D D D you know, so he's he's just copying the show but in like a really shitty way, and like you know making himself the hero and all that and Kirby the villain, um, and a lot of the show is like. DDD um, buying monsters from this weird corporate, like shadowy corporation, to try and like cause trouble and get Kirby the fuck out of town. So because he he's an inconvenience. Buys monsters. Yeah, there. I can't remember the name of it because I never watched the show that much. But mm -hmm. there's this like weird corporation like thing that he like talks to a dude from, and he can just kind of order like it's like Amazon but for like fucked up monsters. <laughs> And he's like, okay, listen, Kirby's being a fucking problem, 
So just just give me a monster. What do you got? Like just and it's just like those are usually episodes or it's like um Meta Knight's there and he's like, you know, trying to teach Kirby how to fight and stuff like that. So who's Meta Knight? Meta Knight is another Kirby. But oh. just you know like uh here let me find a let me find a picture of Meta Knight for you. So with the implication that Kirby is you know a void termina that just chose niceness. Um, Meta Knight would kind of just be like a weird void termina that was like, you know what, fuck you, I just want to play with my sword and be <laughs> mysterious. Because pretty much that's his whole gist in like half the games is he's just like, okay, Kirby, duel me. That's pretty relatable. Like, like half the time you run into Meta Knight. He's he just throws a sword at Kirby and he's like, let's duel. So he just he just wants to mess around and duel and Yeah. I think in Kirby Star Allies you run into that exact thing where he's like you run into like a flat arena and he's like waiting on a little cliff top up above you and he has <laughs> a sword planted in the ground. And if you just float over the sword and go and touch Meta Knight um, he gets mad, kicks the sword away, and this starts the boss battle. Oh. Like, he's he's less of a villain and more just, like, a rival, I guess. That makes sense. So he just wants to, like, be like, who's the better Kirby? Pretty much. Uh, there was in Kirby, uh, what was it? Kirby Superstar Ultra for, like, the, I think it, like, started on the Game Boy, but there was, like, a like, upgraded version on the DS. Um, you do, f like... Yeah, I should mention, uh, Meta Knight has a giant airship. Oh. That he just, like, flies around with a crew and everything. And, uh... Like, he's pretty much just, like, a pirate he's on a... his little airship, and it's weird. An air <laughs> but he's pirate. There. Yeah, pretty much. Um, in... K Kirby Superstar Ultra had, like three or four, like, storylines going on it, which was really cool. Like, a lot of people say that's, like, one of the best games of the series, because it was, like, three Kirby stories in one. Um, but in one of them, <sighs> Kirby and... Kirby just starts fucking wrecking Meta Knight's ship, and I can't remember the specific reason for it. Oh. That doesn't I, uh... sound like our nice, sweet Kirby. Well, I'm I'm ass I'm assuming Meta Knight started something. I yeah. can't remember what. Um, but yeah, he he Kirby hops on his little star and just starts fucking wrecking the ship. Like he's just tearing through the entire crew, like busting up like the guns and like the jet engines and everything. Oof. But yeah, Meta Knight for most of the games is more just like a rival or like a helpful dude. But there are some occasions where he just decides to decides to choose violence. He gets bored. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, oh yeah, speaking of like best Kirby games in the series, uh, Planet Robobot is at least my favorite in the series. And in that one, um, this weird like mega space corporation comes to Planet Popstar. And just just starts planting down these weird um, spikes in the ground that turns everything into machinery. Because the big corporation, like you know, boss man of it, is wanting to use Popstar to like fuel a machine he's building. All right. So he pretty much he pretty much just turns the planet into one big generator. So and. Kirby's planet is called Popstar. Yeah, it's, it's literally it's shaped just like a giant, like glowing yellow star. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, um, but like it's it, it's weird because like from space it literally just looks like a giant yellow glowing like toy star, but then there's like different biomes and stuff when you get onto it, like you know grassy areas and sandy areas and all that. It's weird. Uh, but yeah, he's using the planet as a generator, and obviously Kirby finds this inconvenient, so he starts, you know, going to do his thing of just wrecking shit. Um, and throughout the game, you run into, like, different main characters, like, uh, there is a robot named Susie, who is, like, a... 
I think she's like a weird corporate spy kind of thing, trying to like get rid of all the machinery and like take over the company, but also like, you know, wanting to get Kirby out of the way because, you know, that's her job. Mm. Um so she you know, he defeats her a few times, yada yada. Um she get he gets up to the final corporate boss. He beats him in his like little like the boss has like a little mech suit he wears and everything. Um, and then it's revealed that he was building a machine to grant wishes. Oh. Um, and if you pause for the lore and everything like that, it's revealed that he was doing that so he can bring back his dead daughter. Oh, that's that's really sad. Yeah. Like every, pretty much every lore thing is just randomly weird and dark like that half the time. Yeah. Um, and then it's it's implied that like Susie is actually his daughter, and that you know she, you know, it's it's weird. I didn't look too much into it. That sounds like um, some freaking Neon Genesis Evangelion shiz. Funnily enough, the entire like gimmick of Planet Robobot. Is that Kirby just gets a mech for most of the levels and can just drive that around and beat up enemies? Oh, nice! It's oh, it's fun. Yeah. Um, but eventually, uh, once the boss fight is going and you like you learn about the machine, um, the machine is like this AI that's like super powered and everything. So he brainwashes the corporate boss so he can like boost up his own AI and get stronger. And he turns into a carbon copy of a um, like a giant planet-sized machine that I believe you run into in Superstar Ultra that was also made to grant wishes. Oh. So pretty much the corporate boss just ended up making a copy of that, but like evil. So Kirby ends up beating him by fur by like. Um, merging his own little mech with Meta Knight's airship and just, you know, making one giant, like, starship to shoot at it until it dies. Like, it's not one of those boss fights. How do they merge that? Is it, like, magic, or...? <laughs> so, Kirby's mech, as you can probably assume, also copies abilities. You know, just like Kirby does. Mm -hmm. So, Kirby, Kirby's mech pretty much just, like, absorbs like Meta Knight's airship. And it's the exact same airship, but instead of like Meta Knight's face or like mask on the front of it like it usually is, it's just Kirby's mech. Alright. So just like a giant like just imagine like um like the Starship Enterprise, but with like Kirby's giant face on the front of it pretty much. That's an interesting image in my head. Yeah. I'm trying to find the um a picture of like the giant wish granting robot. Um but yeah, that's a whole thing. And uh with most of the games there is a like a uh, boss rush kind of thing you can go through. And once you reach the final boss of the like boss rush thing of it, instead of fighting like the giant wish granting thing I'm pretty sure, the AI just starts summoning a bunch of like um, final bosses from old games through, like, time dimension portals to fight you instead. So, so like, you have to fight you have to fight, like, the, the final boss from, like, Triple Deluxe or like, other ones. Um, and another interesting thing is that one of the bosses he summons is called Galactonite, okay. which is pretty much just Meta Knight, but, like, pink armor and everything else. Um, and literally, Galactonite's whole deal is that he was such a fucking overpowered warrior that nobody could kill that an ancient civilization just banished his ass to the fucking, like, other dimension. They were just sick of him. Pretty much, like, he was just going around, like, breaking shit, so they are like, you know what, fuck you. And just, like, threw his ass in the void. Um... So, when the... Oh, sorry. What were you saying? I was just wondering, like, because you said, like, earlier, um, if you pause the game, you get lore about the bosses. I'm just wondering how, in the games, most of this kind of lore is, like, told to the player. Oh, like, I can, I can send this, like, 
most of the lore is just like usually you pause the screen and then like on the start of the screen it'll just show like a image of the boss and like a little like paragraph of lore or like a description of it that mm -hmm. kind of thing um and usually in those descriptions of the bosses it'll just say like oh you know all oh, this boss was like an impressive like uh here let me see so if you pause it while you're fighting Susie, it says executive assistant to the president of the Holtman Works Company, which is like the corporation trying to come over. Um, while her job title is secretary, she leads the ongoing invasion project, you know, while also working to like, you know, uh, like sabotage the whole thing and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But you don't learn that until later. So that's pretty much just like how most of the boss like uh, things Oh, um, if you go through the true boss arena of Planet Robobot, um, you fight a harder version of Susie. And that says, um, as a child, Susie was involved in an accident during a mother computer experiment and went missing. Why has she joined the company after all this time? Her full name is Susanna Petraea Holtman, which is like literally just the daughter of that guy. Like, you know, the big boss man. So they literally spelled that out to you. Yep. Like, she went missing. He doesn't realize, you know, she's still alive. So he's like, dude, this fucking sucks. I'm going to build this giant machine to, like, make my wish to, like, bring her back. Well, that sounds like quite a miscommunication, huh? Like, she could yeah. just tell him and then all of this would be all, all right, you know? Yeah. Like, he wouldn't have to be building the machine to, like, do all that, you know? Hmm. It's 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 weird, but I mean it's it's fun. Yeah, it is. Uh, hmm, let me see what else. Oh yeah, sorry if this is like a lot, because you know Kirby lore is a lot to unpack half the time. Mm. Um. Oh yeah. See, so if you pause during the um, the soul of Void Terminus boss fight, it says uh, no telling if it's true, but according to the ancient scrolls. Void Termina may rise again in other forms depending on whether positive or negative energy is gathered. It seems this being of darkness will wander the galaxy until one day he is reborn into a new existence. When he returns, hopefully it will be as a friend. That's cool. And um, we assume that the friend is Kirby then. Yep, like pretty much Kirby is like a Void Termina that wandered around and found a bunch of positive energy. That's really cool. Yep. And the one that destroyed Earth was most likely, like, born from the negative energy of people fighting over, like, technology or magic on Earth. I, I do like that it gives you these hints and it's kind of up to the player to put them together. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And for a lot of them, you don't find, like, the deeper, um, like, boss explanations until you go through, like, the uh, boss rush modes. And... Man, some of those are fucking rough. Yeah, are they difficult? Oh yeah, like it, it, normal normal Kirby games. You know they're 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 baby games. Like you, you can just go through them and like you know beat them in like a few hours. Um, but I mean like collecting all of the like special items and stuff is where a lot of the difficulty is because there's like you know puzzles you got to do or like go through the level in like certain sequences and that kind of thing. Hmm. Um, so there's well, challenge if you look for it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, and the boss arena is like if you took the challenge of finding all the items, but then put that in boss form and then multiplied it by like ten. Um. Oh, another fun little uh, lore tidbit is that in pretty much like a lot of the thumbnails or like not thumbnails, um, what do they call it? Like cover art. Or like opening cutscenes for a lot of the Kirby games, there's an orange butterfly flying around. All right. And uh, that may or may not also be an ancient god, or like, like the Reaper. Oh, um, how how do we know that? Well, because um, the true final boss of like I think one of the boss rush modes for Kirby Star Allies, um, Galactonite shows up out of another fucking void portal. 
And, of course, seeing that, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm about to die. Oof. But then, all of a sudden, that same orange butterfly flies down, touches Meta Knight, and he just fucking disappears. Like, just wiped from existence like Thanos snapped. Oh. And then the butterfly flies up into the air and then becomes um, an enemy named Morpho Knight. And um, that boss description is on the Day of Judgment, this fluttery fiend will fly into action, brought into existence by the greatest warrior in the galaxy, and reborn as a knight of doom through years of adversity, now brings an epic battle with a pure being twisted by a dark past. Never freaking trust orange butterflies. Never. Poisonous. <laughs> Toxic, if you will. <laughs> so yeah, like, if you, you can totally just play through, like, any Kirby game and just be totally satisfied with the story, but, like, as soon as you try and, like, actually look into the lore or, like, story of any of the enemies or bosses, you're gonna be sucked into that for, like, ever. It, it does sound like one of those, like, rabbit holes you can go down. Oh, absolutely. Uh, oh yeah, so that little that little cat snake thing you're drawing there in the background, I think its yeah. name is, uh, is, I think, Whippy? Yeah, I was about to ask you about it. So... Pretty much it's just like any other enemy. Like, you know, it's just, um, like you suck it up and you get an ability. And as you could probably assume, its ability is like Kirby gets a little, like, cowboy whip and cowboy hat. You can just do a bunch of moves with that. Oh. I, I just thought you'd think it was cute. It's like, you know, little cat snake thing. But that is real cute. And it's also cowboy related. Yeah, well, he, he appears in one of, like, the. Like, one of the desert areas in the game. Oh, I see. Yeah. Like, they, like pretty much every, like, ability you get as Kirby gives you some kind of, like, outfit to match it. Like, um, if you get the rock ability that just, you know, turns you into a rock and lets you just fucking roll through shit. Um, you get, like, a little, um, it's like, it's like almost like a samurai helmet kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So just, just to show that you're like, you know, an unstoppable warrior kind of, you know. Um, there is, like, if you get the snow ability, you get like, um, not, not Eskimo, I know that's not the proper term anymore, Inuit, yeah. Yeah. Like an Inuit hood. Um, but yeah, like pretty much every outfit, there's like some kind of, like, you know, thing to go with it. Um, do you have like a favorite ability? Or outfit? Oh god, there's so many. Like, um, I think in Kirby Star Allies they introduced like a spider ability where you throw webs around and do all that. But my favorite one, I guess, would probably be like the beetle ability, which just lets you like impale enemies and just toss them around. Uh, speaking of Kirby... which, how violent oh, yeah. are these games? Ah. Uh... I mean, you know, like I said, they're like kids' games, so it's not like outwardly violent. Mm. Like, you know, looking at it as an adult, there's some stuff where it's like, oh god, where it's like, you know, like I said, like Kirby's wearing like a giant metal like beetle horn and impales enemies. Yeah. Like, like obviously there's no blood or anything, but you know they're wiggling around in your giant beetle horn, so it's like, oh. But you know, they're 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 non-violent enough to get like an E10 rating or something like that. So it's like, it's mostly just kind of implied all the pain and suffering that's going on. <laughs> yeah, j just like with the lore, there's always some implied violence and pain. Mm. So, the other enemy behind DDD there that I sent you, um, the this orange one? one. Yep. Uh, their name is Scarfy. It's a cute name. And, uh, yeah, they go they go against everything you learn in Kirby. So as soon as you as soon as you start playing Kirby, it shows you that like oh you know you press the B button to suck in an enemy and you get an ability from them. Um, if you try to suck up Scarfy, they turn into a fucking freakazoid monster that comes chasing after you. Oh. Like in the image I sent, like in the image of um image of them I sent. Yeah. Um, 
like on the like the yeah the so right one is what it one. turns into yeah. yeah so you try and suck them up and they just get pissed at you and try, like come to kick your ass i bet that's like scary the first time you do that oh yeah no i, I remember that like terrifying me as a kid yeah i'd say so <laughs> god uh what other one? Oh yeah the the green one i sent i don't know if you're drawing that one or not no, I don't think um, I'm drawing that one. Okay, that's okay. Well, I sent you one that's like a, a sea anemone, pretty much. Um, their their only uh, attack is they like shoot little like pellets just straight up into the air, and that's it. They don't give you an ability or anything. They're just kind of like in inconvenience most of the time. Oh, so they're just kind of uh, there. Yeah, uh, but yeah, their name is um, Glunk. I'm pretty sure. And, like, it's weird because most of the names for these enemies you will just never see. So, like, before this I had no goddamn idea that little that little sea anemone was named Glunk. Glunk. Like an orc named it. <laughs> um, I think, like, the two most popular ones are, like, Waddle Doo and Waddle Dee. And what's like, their deal? Much... Uh, they're just, like, you know, the basic run-of-the-mill, like, you know... 2D platform enemy that just walks around and is like, you know, just fodder for you to fucking like kill and get out of the way. Yeah. Uh, Waddle D, let me let me look up pictures of him because they're cute. Waddle D um, doesn't give you an ability. He's just kind of cute and walks around. Uh, he's he's kind of um, King DDD's like um, signature goon. So like most of the games, you'll just see them like running around and like doing errands for him, like. And one of the, like, I think in one of the earlier games, he sends out a bunch of Waddle Dees to, like, steal food. Okay, sorry about that. Am I still there? Yep. Okay, J Jordy likes to do this thing where he is a little bastard and steps on my headphone cord and yanks it out. Oh. I was, <sighs> I was really wondering what, what could have made that noise. Yeah, that was him doing his little, his little evil fucking deeds. Is that just to like get your attention or? Well it's like sometimes he wants to like lay up beside me but like you know I've got like my phone charger and my like headphone mm -hmm. cords so there's a bunch of cords so he doesn't really watch where he's going and just kind of you know steps on them all. Oh I see. Uh, I'm sorry I sent you a picture of the Waddle D. He's just a little little little, little lad you know. It's really cute I feel like I've seen that a few places before. Oh, yeah, he's in a bunch of merchandise. Yeah. Um, there is a bandana Waddle D that's just wearing a uh, blue bandana and has a spear that everybody wants in uh, Smash Bros. Um, and then Waddle Do is pretty much just a Waddle D, but the entire face is like just one big eyeball. Yeah. And, uh,. He actually attacks on like Waddle D by like shooting a little like a uh, laser beam out of the eye, as as you know most of giant all eyeball enemies do. Love me a good laser beam. Yeah, pretty. Oh yeah, they're good. But yeah, like there there's just, there's just a bunch of Kirby enemies, like most of them in like you know insignificant. Where it's just like you know this is the general enemy. Um. I also sent you a picture of Gooey, the like blue goo ball. Oh. And he is actually a companion for Kirby in some of the games. As just, you know, he just rolls around and like hits stuff with his tongue and all that. So the one that's uh, looking a bit silly with his tongue out. Yeah, he's, he's just a silly little dude. Um, but his, uh, his whole thing is a goon, or like not goon, a uh, companion to Kirby. Is that, uh, remember earlier when I brought up Dark Matter, the weird alien, like, force thing that wants to, like, hive mind the entire universe? Mm hmm Uh, he is actually a smaller bit of Dark Matter that just kind of <laughs> decided to fuck off, I guess, and become silly. So, that, that companion to Kirby is literally just a bit of Dark Matter? Yep. Wow. So I, I, I like to imagine um, that little bit of dark matter saw Kirby and was like, yo, I want to get a piece of that. 
and just became a little, little silly gooey. That's real cute. Yeah, like, there's there's a bunch of like cute but weird, you know, stuff on the surface of Kirby. Yeah, it's weird because it's like you're talking about all these really cute little characters that are really simplistic, and then it's like freaking eldritch gods. Yeah, it's kind of like if you're going through like a Mario game and like Cthulhu just kind of popped up. Yeah, that's that's the vibe I get from Kirby. Yeah. Absolutely. And I haven't even brought up the boss named uh, Zero, who is another ancient god that pretty much created and like leads the um, dark matters. And I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a picture of Zero that you can like you know put up or something or whatever. Um, because man, he is interesting looking. Okay, I'm excited to see him. Oh wow. Yeah. So Zero's whole deal is just, is just that right there. He is an ancient being. Just super fucked up everything. He looks amazing. Oh yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the that that form of him you fight in uh, Kirby sixty four. Um, where like the dark matters are back and like trying to you know do the usual hive mind shit on like the universe. Um, and at the end of Kirby sixty four, if you get like all the special items and all that stuff, you have your fight with him. Um. And he just pops out full fucking, like, Eldridge, Angel Wings, Halo, everything else. Um, he bleeds when you shoot him in the game. Like, you know, everything else. So, um, at a actual certain... blood for this boss? Yes, actual blood. Oof. The the first time it ever pops up in a Kirby series. I think, like, the only time it ever, like, did again. Um, his original appearance came from an older one i believe on like the game boy kirby's dreamland 3 something like that um where he's the same thing but just like a giant like only the giant eyeball like no angel wings or halo um and once you do enough damage to him his red pupil pops out of his eye in just a fucking explosion of blood and you fight that until he dies that's horrifying sounding Oh yeah, it's just, it's completely different than anything else you would see in the series. Like, uh, every other boss is, like, you know, implied to be, like, Ancient God or, like, you know, with Void Termina. Like, he just is. Mm. But that, that's some weird Eldred shit. That you just kind of run into. So, this, that one seems like the most explicit part. Of all of this kind of subtext that the game gives yeah. you. Yeah, like th like that's the that's the most it'll like really show off. Like if you just look at Void Termina and like don't pause for the lore or anything, it would just be like, oh okay, this is a big ancient like you know this is a big evil, big evil god thing. Mm. But then you read into it and it's like, oh this fucking killed Earth. Okay. <laughs> like like again, everything in Kirby is either like surface level and you still understand it. Or fucking, you know, you read into it and it's like, oh god. Whew. So I think really that's like most, like a general understanding of the lore, at least. Hmm. Um, let, me, let, me, let me look at my notes. I, wanted to, I also wanted to talk about uh, Kirby Air Ride, which was like my all-time favorite game of the series. Um... And that is because it's a Kirby kart racing game. Oh. And you, you, you know the general rules, like in controls of a kart racing game, right? Where it's like, you know, A to go, B to break, and there's like a drift button and all that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, um, Sakurai, um, I believe, like, he's the one that really, like, Steam headed all the Kirby games, like, and I think, I think, like, designed Kirby from the start. Um, if I'm correct, Kirby Air Ride was the last Kirby game he, like, really directed, I think. 
Um, and he said, hey, fuck that. You only need two buttons. <laughs> so you use the joystick to turn, or like, you know, move Kirby, mm. and the A button to break, drift, and use your power. How the heck does that work? It's all timing based. So your your little your little air ride, which is like the carts you're riding, they just go automatically. So it's just like all the timing is based on like when you need to stop and drift, when you need to like suck up an enemy to get the power. Like he simplified the controls, but like made it more like made it more of a difficulty curve in actually like mastering them. You know. That that actually sounds kind of alright. Yeah, it's really interesting, and it's like, because it, it controls like pretty much every other kart racing game. This is you know you go on the track and like drift around the corners and like, like the the items are just like Kirby enemies that you suck up and use those powers of that kind of thing. Mm. Um, but like, so yeah, that's the, that's the whole gist of that is that it's just really fun and cool, and like you can unlock King DDD who just rides around on a little like um. Like a unicycle motorcycle thing, and just instead of sucking up enemies, he just beats them, beats the shit out of them with his hammer. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you can also unlock Meta Knight, who I don't think it showed it in the picture I sent earlier, but he has bat wings underneath his cape that he just flies around with. Oh, cool. Yeah, so he like instead of like driving, he just flies around and like cuts shit with his sword. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the the main racing game is cool, but the real the real fucking heart of the game is um, the city trial, which is a game mode that would pretty much just fucking change everything. So in the game mode, you're put in this little like weird town with like different areas. Like there's a volcano area next to like a city area next to like a little forest you know just like little like little biomes of this little city and the main gist of the like mode is to like ride around on whatever air ride you can find scattered around um and then you pick up pickups that like boost your stats like your speed or like drifting or like um like uh, the boost you get whenever you drift mm -hmm. and then after, like, the 5 or 10 minute timer, like, however long you set it for, you are slapped into a mini game that ranges from either a drag race to, like, fucking skee ball, pretty much, where you just go off a ramp and, like, try and hit the best target you can. Or, um, there's one where you have to just fly straight at high up as you can. Or even just, like, a demolition derby where you just beat the shit out of as many enemies as you can. And whoever wins that is the winner. That sounds really interesting, especially for a race game. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's, it, like honestly, it's almost like a battle royale. Yeah, like, I was kind of getting in, that vibe, yeah. Yeah, like, you drop in, and you just gr grab as much, like, good stuff as you can. Like, there will be random, like, cars and vehicles around the map you can grab that are, like, better than the starting one. Um, and you just go from there. And interestingly enough, I think in uh, Smash Bros. for, like, the Wii U, Sakurai, who also directs, like, all the Smash Bros. games, put in, like, a little board game kind of thing, where you go around the board and you pick up fighters and, like, pick up boosts to boost their stats, and at the end you have, like, a big fighting match to see who, like, you know, wins it all. Oh. So it's it's interesting to notice that Sakurai loves like slapping shit in from his old Kirby games into like <laughs> Smash Bros. too. Yeah, he's like, mm -hmm. I got this right in Kirby, so might as well just I mean, put it you, in here. You, you you can't go wrong with Kirby. Like literally, if you ask anybody who's ever played any Kirby games, there's not a single bad one. Really? Like, yeah, like there are some that are like. Like, obviously not, like, as good as some other ones. Like, there's a fucking Kirby golfing spin-off game. Where you just roll Kirby around like a golf ball. That actually sounds amazing. It's pretty good. It's... 
fucking hard as shit. Really? Oh yeah, because you have a limited, a limited like amount of moves, and the goal of like every course is to like hit every enemy, and then make it to the hole. So like you have to like pick the trajectory and like the power like of the swing to hit Kirby. So you have to like you know aim at the enemies and like hit them and then like make it back to the hole in time to like not run out of moves. Oh gosh, this is this is reminding me of a uh, a mini game from uh, Barnyard, the shovelware video game for Barnyard for the PS2. <laughs> Was I'm assuming there was like a golfing mini game in that, or yeah, like there was a golfing mini game, and it was just it's one of the worst things I've ever played, and the most <laughs> rage inducing thing I ever played as a kid. Okay, well, K Kirby, God, what was it called? Like Kirby Golf and Dream? Like, let me let me look it up for you so you can like check it out later. Mm. But I'm I'm I can assure you it's better than that at least. Oh, I'm um, sure. Like there, there's there's a few spin-off games. Like you know, like I said, there's Kirby Air Ride. You know, the kart racing game. You got the golf game. I'm pretty sure there were like two or three pinball games. Like I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they kind of just like were really loving Kirby's round shape because they can do like a bunch of stuff with it. Yeah, like is Kirby football going to be next? God. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me let me punt Kirby. That'd be nice. They can replace FIFA with Kirby. God, I don't know. I don't know if Nintendo marketing would like the idea of people like kicking Kirby. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a bit of a problem. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, it's called Kirby's Dream Course. Uh, there's also um, a multiplayer mode for it. That if you feel like killing your friends, that's a good you know way to good good way to start that. But it's kind of like Mario Party, where it's like. You, you don't play it with your good friends because you'll end up just killing each other by the end of it. Oh, yeah. Because the whole point of that, like, the multiplayer mode is to, like, hit whatever enemies you can before your, like, other player and then make it to the hole. So it's like, it's like if you're golfing at the same time and just trying to get to the end before the other person. And you can bump into each other and, like, send each other off the course and, like, other stuff like that. Oh, yeah. It's it's a whole deal. Um, but yeah, back back to the Smash Bros. thing. I had another hot take, and that was um, Smash Bros. Ultimate's story mode. Uh, I consider that a Kirby game. Oh, and why is that? Well, so the whole the whole thing with um, the Smash Bros. Ultimate story mode spoilers, I guess, even though it's came out like. God, when did, when did that game come out? Like, two years ago now? Mm. But yeah, um, the whole story mode is that at the very beginning, a fucking, like, god of light comes to, like, the Smash Bros. universe or whatever, and just fucking Thanos snaps everything out of existence uh, besides Kirby, who escapes. And then, from then on, the rest of the game is you run around um, collecting the fighters and, like, spirits of characters um, to, like, boost whatever fighters you're using and, like, get to the end goal, which is, like, fight the gods. Um, but, yeah, like I said, Kirby is the only one to escape all that. Like, even, like, Sonic or, like, other characters couldn't fight off the gods' like, light beams that wiped everybody out. Like, Sonic... Like, Sonic the fucking Hedgehog could not outrun the light beams, but <laughs> Kirby was able to, like, outfly them on his little star. I love that. Yeah, that does make it sound like a Kirby game. Um, oh yeah, no, I, I played I played the full thing through just as Kirby. Because, you know, it gives you the option. So it's like, yeah, I might as well. Um, and that's also a thing where you can just kind of, you can, you can kind of see... Ooh, excuse me. You can kind of see um, Sakurai's like Kirby bias, because like he shoves in the like successful Kirby air ride mode. Kirby's like almost the star of the story mode that like saves everybody. Like, I think even in uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl's story mode, Kirby is the one that like like deals a decisive blow 
to like the enemy's forces at one point. Yeah, absolutely. So, do you think Sakurai like likes Kirby more than anything else? One hundred percent. Like that's like that's like if you make your OC and like make a big like that's like making an OC in somebody else's world and then making your character like the main character of it. Yeah. It's like like <laughs> like you get characters like Mario and Sonic and everything else that are like big gaming icons and then you have them fucking die and have Kirby be the only one to save them. I do, I do love that. It's like, if you get the chance to do that with your freaking OC, you might as well. Oh, absolutely! And like, it's like, it's like, it's like you like make a self-insert fan fiction and just put your OC in it, <laughs> and have them have them like solve the story of like whatever show or something you put them in. But yeah, weirdly enough, I think it's, I think it's implied. Pop star is like, just a normal thing. Like in all the other games is lore too, because in I think Kirby's Dream Land again, you can actually run into a uh, Samus from Metroid and help her out. Oh, in a Kirby game. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Like you, like you, I think it was like you defeat certain enemies or like use a certain ability, and like at the end of that little bonus level, she's just kind of there, like waving at Kirby, like "Oh, thank you." So that's that, that's interesting. And then in um, Link's Awakening, like the like the old version and the one that just got like a new like remake or whatever, mm. there are very like Kirby like enemies just kind of in there. So it's 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 all just very interesting. Yeah, I like seeing the connections between all of that. Yeah. Do you think because of that Smash Bros. storyline that we have confirmation that Kirby is the most powerful Nintendo character? Oh, I would say so. Yeah? I, don't, I, can't, I can't think of another Kirby, like, Nintendo character that's killed multiple Eldridge gods because they inconvenienced him. Kind of reminds me of Squirrel Girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. Like I literally, literally, I think half the Kirby games start because like Kirby gets woken up from his nap, or like they make him drop his slice of cake, and like you know, like an evil Eldritch God makes Kirby like drop his cake, and he's just like, you know what? I've chosen violence, <laughs> and just kicks ass. Uh, I think there was Kirby Epic Yarn. Which was like another, you know, usual 2D Kirby platforming game, but like the entire style was like everybody, everything was made of yarn and like other patchwork things. Mm. And Kirby was like sucked into that dimension where like, you know, evil, evil yeah. things were going on, obviously. And he's just like, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll fuck shit up. That's my job. And so he just, get, I can't remember what the final boss of that was, because it's been years since I played it on the Wii. Um, but yeah, it's just like, like, imagine, imagine, like, you're an ancient god, like, just going around fucking shit up because you want to, and then you see this, like, little pink fucking puff ball just tearing through every single, like, thing you throw at it. I think that's the most interesting thing about Kirby, that he's just like a little pink ball that can frick shiz up. Like, do you, do you think it's kind of like disgust? Or like, there's like some weird prophecy going on, where it's like all the ancient gods or like powerful forces of the universe like, know about Kirby. And so, so like, if some of them see, them see him, they're just like, oh fuck. It's like, alright, alright, cancel the invasion, Kirby's here, I fucked up, I'm sorry. That's absolutely what they should do. Like, I, I would love a Kirby game that's just like five minutes long, where like, some ancient god starts to invade, Popstar sees Kirby and is like, oh, never mind, and just turns the fuck around. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta find a universe without Kirby. 
well, that's the, that's the fucking issue, is that there only seems to be one, because that's all the ones that all these fucking Eldritch Gods feel like invading. Oh, yeah. Like, they can't seem to find a fucking break. Uh, oh, yeah. Fucking, um, Kirby Star Allies is interesting, because, as the name implies, you can... It's very, like, team-focused. To where it's like Kirby and you can um, recruit enemies to be your allies. Mm-hmm. And like you can do special like team up combo attacks to like get through puzzles or like other things like that. Um, but it also has like different characters from older games come and be your allies. Like um, one character from, I think again, Superstar Ultra uh, named Marx. Okay. Um, did I send you a picture of him? Uh, oh yeah, I did. He's the little he's the little pink dude with the shoes and like the clown hat. Um, so the Marks is the one that tells Kirby in the very beginning, like, "Yo, some shit's fucking up in Pop Star. You need to come help me." Like, oh, and you're like, "Oh, okay, nice." So you go and help him, and by the end of it, you end up finding the um, like giant wish granting machine I was talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. And it starts talking to Kirby, like, you know, oh, hey, thanks for, like, saving the Popstar. Is there anything I can do for you? And before Kirby, like, he gets to do anything, Marx shows up, fucking slaps his ass out of the way, and then wishes for, like, ultimate power. Oh, just like that. Pretty much. And the machine, being kind of, like, a bad kind of neutral, is like, yeah, alright. And just gives it to him. So... Marx becomes, like, pretty much just a fucking evil little gremlin with the powers of a god. And it's fucked. Like, the boss battle is interesting and fucked up because it's like you're fighting a god, but in the most chaotic fucking way. Because he's, like, like he grows weird mechanical, like, angel wing looking things. And it just flies around the arena, like, blasting lasers at you, spitting out enemies. Like, all that. Um... And at one point during the fight, he'll just split in half, and a black hole will open in the middle of him and suck you up and do damage. A freaking black hole. Yep. Just straight up. But, like, yeah, just imagine as a kid, like, I sent you a uh, picture of his, like, boss form. But, yeah, just imagine, like, you're fighting this boss, and then, like, again, kind of like a weird random traumatic thing that you could just see as a kid. Is like the boss you're fighting just randomly like splits in half. Oh yeah. And just like you know, yeah. like there's a bunch of weird like yeah there's a bunch of weird Kirby stuff that could just happen and like scare you as a kid. And other than um, I forget the name, this uh, little guy there. Was there any other stuff that you personally experienced? That you'd be like, oh, that was that was scary as a kid. Uh, I can't, I can't remember. Um, let me let me keep looking at some of the enemies and like maybe someone will jog my memory. Mm. Um, but until then, uh, have you seen Square Kirby? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, God, for like a weird like I think it was like a kind of advertising thing they were doing for Kirby Star Allies. They um. Like, they were doing this weird thing that, like, uh, it's like, oh, you know, guess what character this is from, like, The Shadow. And, you know, it, it was, like, obviously, you know, you can't really tell what it was. Like, oh, that's weird. What is that? And they revealed it. And it's just, it's just straight up just square Kirby. And it's, like, oh. it's, it, it's, it's cursed in the sense that, like, it's not bad, but it's, like, one of those forbidden images. That's, like... A total troll, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Like, nobody be and like then, Kirby. That's that's square. The well, then the, then the then the funny thing is is that whenever Minecraft Steve was added into uh, Super Smash Bros, uh, Square Kirby became a, like a, a like a normal thing because normal if he thing? sucks up, oh yeah, because if he sucks up Minecraft Steve, he becomes like a Minecraft cube, and he's oh. all squarey. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. And, like, that, that's... Honestly, that's my favorite part. 
about fucking Smash Bros. Or just seeing whatever like weird shit Kirby gets to do whenever like there's a new character added. How do you feel about Sans and Smash Bros? Oh, I fucking love that. <laughs> like the only thing better than him being a me costume is like just if him himself got in as like an actual character. Yeah, that would because... have been real cool. Because it's like the the thing I like about Smash Bros is that it's like all like the gaming icons together. So like it, it would make sense if like a fucking gaming masterpiece like Undertale that like just completely changed like the industry. If you know the mascot Sans was just added to it, you know, which he he kind of was in the end, but like it would have been more unique if he was like an actual character. Yeah, I I I do wish it was an actual character. I remember um. When me and my boyfriend were gonna get, like, Sans and Smash, I think he was, like, 80 cents. And from that point onward, we, we started, like, if we were in the shop and we wanted to get something, we'd be like, this is worth, like, three Sans. God. <laughs> I mean, really, this, man, you know what, fuck Bitcoin, let's just, let's just, like, start selling Sanses. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, like, a good metric of how much something is worth. God, no more pennies, we only deal in sands. <laughs> uh, wait, it's like, I think my favorite part of, like, the sands reveal was just watching all, like, the YouTubers or streamers that were, like, streaming the E3 or, like, Nintendo like Nintendo Direct that, that was going on and in. Um, just, like, fucking lose their shit as soon as, like, Megalovania started playing. Yeah. Because everybody had the same reaction of just utter fucking like guttural shock it is shocking and it's especially shocking to me because it's like a song that was in homestuck is now in smash bros yeah oh god that's weird yeah it's very strange well did you know another song um toby fox did for homestuck um oh, no, I, I didn't think it was for homestuck i think it was like a weird Oh god, I'd have, have to like look up the story again. Like I have to like tell you about it because it's like it's not related to Kirby at all. Mm. But it's just like it's weird that it made it into like the official Pokemon game, like Sword and Shield. Yeah, I think I heard about that. It was like a freaking meme song he made for Homestuck. Yeah, like yeah, and he just slipped that into Pokemon. <laughs> he was like, he's probably like, oh, this this melody is good. Renews that. I, I, imagine. Imagine, like, like the Pokemon company comes to you and is like, hey, we want you to design, like, you know, a, a song for the game for us. And you just put in the most, like, shit posty like, meme song you could. And they use it. And they use it, yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, really, why would you not not take the chance to do that, I guess? Yeah. Me. Like that's oh my god. Uh, I, like oh yeah, another thing. Um, about, like my favorite fucking thing about the goddamn, um, Sans reveal, was uh Joel from Vine Sauce was like streaming the whole direct, and he kept making the joke every time the screen faded to black, like the entire direct, where he would just play like the start of Megalovania as like a, you know a little 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 troll joke, <laughs> and then as soon as it actually started playing for real. He just fucking, like, lost it. Oh, that's a freaking amazing coincidence. Yeah. Oh, I can't imagine, like, how psyched anyone would have been in that situation. That just sounds incredible. <laughs> it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, the boy who cried wolf, except it's fucking Saiyan's Undertale. Yeah, it is like that. But yeah, I think, I think... Like, all the fucking Kirby copy abilities are, like, the best part of Smash Bros. Because it's just, like, like Sephiroth being added. You just have Kirby, but with, you know, Sephiroth hair. And, like, the ten-foot-long sword. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I gotta try Kirby out next time I play Smash. Oh, it's very good. Yeah. Um, it used to be in one of the older Smash Bros. I can't remember which one. That if you... Um... I sent you a funny, funny Sephiroth Kirby picture, by the way. 
But yeah, um, it used to be in one of the older Smash Bros. games if you just um, like sucked up um, another player and then didn't, didn't swallow them and copy their ability or anything and just walked off the stage, um, they would die first before you did. So if it was like one-to-one, -one, you could just do that and walk off the stage and you would still win. Was that like a bug or intended? It wasn't necessarily a bug. It was just how like, how like um, you know, dying worked in the game. Mm. Is that like, you know, since they were sucked up inside you, I guess it would just count like as you attacking them and knocking them off, so they would die first technically. Hmm. That's but it was like the most. It was, just, yeah, it was like just the most like asshole troll thing to do. <laughs> Like, I think you could do the same thing with uh, Bowser, with his, like, side grab ability, where he, like, grabs you and just fucking, like, plummets you into the ground. That's true. The only, the only Smash character I've really played is Bowser, and you can do some troll stuff with him. Oh, he's very good. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, have you ever heard of, um, an Automaton? I've heard of them, yes. Uh, there's a, there's a Kirby one. He seems well suited to to be one of those. Really, I think I think Nintendo especially likes to just like slap Kirby onto like any kind of round of merchandise they can. Yeah. Like, um, like there's a there's a official Kirby desk fan you could get. <laughs> really. Yeah, where it's just it's just like a little 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 figure of Kirby, pretty much, but he's got like a fan in his mouth, so it's like he's like you know sucking you in or blowing you in. Um, there is a Kirby, like, plush cushion thing you can get where you, like, rest your head inside of Kirby. Inside of him? Yeah, like, his mouth is open, so it's like he's swallowing you. Oh. Yeah, like, I can send a picture of it. Like, there, I think, I think, I think a big, um, mainly, Jap like, Japanese merchandise thing is, like, a pillows that you can, like, hide your head in to, like, block out darkness and that kind of thing. Yeah, that sounds nice. Like, for sensory issues, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Kirby one, Kirby one doesn't seem too sort of to it, just because, like, the mouth is so fucking big. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's something. Just the idea of being inside Kirby isn't very pleasant to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Speak speaking of being inside Kirby, um, as bad as that sounds, <laughs> um... The inside of Kirby is literally just a void. I guess that makes sense, yeah. Like, there, there's literally nothing inside Kirby. Like, in um, Triple Deluxe, I think it was, or like one of the other DS ones, um, you can suck up an item and like save it for later. And it shows it on the bottom screen. And it, literally all the bottom screen is is just like a fucking black like space void. With the items floating around it in a bubble. Oh, so it's like um, a freaking bag of holding or whatever. Pretty much. Uh, so that like imagine like I would. At one on one hand, I kind of want to know what the hell happens to the enemies whenever they're sucked up in there. Oh yeah. Because it, in what I can assume is like they get sucked up in it, they're just in the void for like. A few seconds, and then they just like disintegrate and are absorbed into Corby Kirby to like be his powers. That that doesn't sound very nice. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just like it's 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 the, the the one way you can interpret how that works, I guess. Who? Mm -hmm. But I mean, even even with all the weird stuff about Kirby, like you know, like that, or like the Eldritch God shit and all that. Uh, there's there's no wrong way to like interpret or draw Kirby or anything. Yeah. Like literally, and I think one of the first uh, games, Kirby games, like for the NES and all that, um, it gives you a little like art tutorial on how to draw Kirby, and the tutorial is just draw three circles, a little smiley face, and he's done. I do love that, like, cause I I did like a bunch of sketches I showed you, and I was like. Yeah. I can just kind of 
do whatever, and it looks like Kirby. Like I think I think I think that it was exactly how they were wanting Kirby to be. Like yeah. they wanted him to be be like a very simplistic, like relatable and cutesy character that anybody could just you know like design or draw or like you know do whatever they wanted with him. Yeah, especially good for like kids playing the game, so they can just you know draw Kirby themselves. Oh, absolutely! Like I mean, really, what's what's more relatable than just a tiny little orb that eats a lot? Yeah, he's real cute. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you um, some official game artwork of Kirby's drawings, like that Kirby himself has drew of some of the other characters. You you should Aww. you should put those on the screen because they're very good. Oh, those are cute. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna like, put them up. But yeah, pretty much pretty much every every interpretation of Kirby is, is that he's. He's he's just a little dude, like a little little kid, pretty much, you know. Who's this guy? Uh oh yeah, so those, like the little like the last three little bottom dudes are um, like kind of antagonists of some of the games. So the one on the left, um, is Terezi. Like the brown uh, spider-looking one with the eyes. Mm. Um, he is the henchman I was talking about earlier for. Triple Deluxe, who works under the um, the final boss, who is a giant wasp queen, who is pretty much just trying to like plantify and like take over Pop Star, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, he realizes like, hey, that shit sucks, and like helps Kirby out. Ah, uh, so they get redeemed. Yeah, pretty much. Like he he's even like an ally you can play with and as in uh, Kirby Star allies later on. Oh, that's nice. Um, and then the next dude, the little mouse in like the red top hat, um, he is part of a treasure hunting mouse squad in a Kirby Squeak Squad. Um, his whole deal is, is that you know he's like the little captain of a little treasure hunting squad of like mice. Um, you kind of fight him like throughout the game. Like you know, uh, you'll go through a level, you'll find a treasure chest. And then as soon as you find it, his little squeak, squeak squad, squad will come out, and they'll like start fighting you to try to like steal that treasure chest from you. Mm. And then if you can make it to the end of the level with it intact, you know you'll get like extra points and like power ups and stuff. Mm. Um, and then by the end of that game, um, he ends up opening a uh, forbidden treasure chest that opens up and releases a um, ancient evil like uh, energy spirit. That just kind of tries to kill shit. Oh, that 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 takes a turn for the worse pretty fast, huh? Yeah, it's it's kind of like the whole moral of the story is like don't be fucking greedy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you know Kirby ends up beating like the shit out of that, obviously, and just that's kind of the end. Um, and then uh, the last guy on the right is a uh, Magalore, who in uh, Kirby for the Wii, I think it was like. Return to Dreamland or something, you end up finding his uh, wrecked spaceship. Mm -hmm. And throughout the levels, you like help him find um, like the parts to his ship so he can fix it up. And um, just, you know, fix up his ship so he can get the fuck out of there. Um, but then I think at the end, he ends up like kind of betraying you and using the ship to. Uh, fly to and get this other treasure, I believe, that ended up being this cursed crown he puts on and become becomes like a super evil charged, you know? And you gotta you gotta you gotta beat his ass. <laughs> lots of, lots of plot twists, huh? Yeah, pretty much pretty much uh, every final boss for a Kirby game is either like a weird plot twist of Hey, this thing is actually like a fucking ancient god you're about to fucking kill. Or uh, the character you were helping ends up unleashing something they fucking really shouldn't have. Yeah, absolutely. So there, there's there, yeah, there's just a lot. You know, it's interesting. It is, and I'm, um, I'm really happy to like learn about it. Because it's oh, yeah. like, I, I wanted to ask you, why do you think, like, because when... Like, before I talked to you about Kirby, when I thought of Kirby, I was like, oh, he's just, just a cute 
platform protagonist. Why do you think mm. not more people know about how deep the lore goes? Well, I think the, I think the main problem is well, I mean, it's, it's not really a problem. It's just like yeah, the the games really point themselves towards kids. You know, it, it's kind of like Pokemon, where it's like, you know, obviously they're more geared towards kids. Uh, Kirby, like, more so. Uh, but Kirby, like, likes to take the direction of, like, being deeper in lore than what it implies. So that draws a lot of older fans to it. But, like, if you're just some random Joe Schmo walking along the sidewalk and you see an advertisement for Kirby, that just shows, like, you know, a little pink puffball being happy and, like, you know, all that. You're going to think, like, oh, this is a kid's game, you know, whatever. And go buy it. Or, like, you know, walk by it. Not, like, pay too much attention to it. Yeah. It's, it's one of those games that, like, I think you play as a kid and then you get more appreciation for it as an adult. Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's like, it's like I said earlier, it's like you can go through the whole game surface level and it's just, like, a fun little silly kid's game. But then once you actually start reading into it, it's like, oh god, you know? But um, speaking of fucking Kirby advertisements, there's this weird trend for whenever they're like localizing the uh, advertisements or the uh, cover art for all the games where uh, they will make Kirby look, you know, happy and go lucky on the like Japanese box art for the games. Hmm. But then whenever they're bringing them over to the West, they'll make Kirby just look pissed, like look pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> like like Kirby Air Ride, the box art for that's a good example. Uh, where the box art is just him riding on a little star, being happy in the Japanese version. But then on the like Western box art, he just kind of looks pissed off for like no good reason. <laughs> like damn, bro, what's got you so fucking mad? You're just kind of riding along. <laughs> yeah, I don't usually think of Kirby as someone that's like pissed. Yeah, no, like, pretty much, like, like I said, the only time he's ever fucking pissed in any of the games is when he's, like, inconvenienced by, like, an elder god knocking his cake over or something. Yeah, rightfully so. Like, the, like the, most, the most you ever see of him pissed is whenever he's, like, about to fight a boss and he's got, like, a determined look on his face. Yeah. But other than that, he's never, like, you know, ready to fucking murder. I wonder what they're thinking there. Was it, were they like? Do you think they were like, "Oh, it will sell better in in the West if Kirby looks pissed off." That's pretty. That's pretty much it. It's like, you, you know, like Western, like developers and like localization teams and shit like that, will see like a pink puff ball Kirby, and think that like, oh, you know, no, no modern gamer is gonna want to like play with that. That's a fucking, that's a little kids thing. You know, gamers these days want, like, you know, shooters and, like, fighting games and all that. So they just try and make Kirby, like, more intimidating looking. That's the funniest thing, though, is, like, even if you make him look intimidating, he's still a little pink ball. Like, he's 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 just an orb. Yeah. With, like, tiny little nub arms and, like, feet. Mm. I think... So it's... it's, it's... <laughs> yeah? It's, like, it's just, it's just weird, because, like, no matter how you... Like, you know, like I said, there's no, like, wrong way to draw Kirby. Mm. But, like, no matter how you draw him, he's just going to be a little pink, like, puffball with nub arms. Absolutely. I think he's, like, the epitome of Don't Judge a Book by its cover. Pretty much. But, like, speaking of which, I think the only, I think I am wrong. The only wrong way to fucking draw Kirby is that, like, edgy art where it's, like, you know, oh, Kirby, like, covered in blood, like, actually eating something. Yeah, like, that's I think, no I think, good. <laughs> like, I think when I was younger, like, there was art, like, you'd always see on Google Images of, like, those classic memes where it's, like, the black, like, text box around an image with, like, the white text. And it was, like, you know, Kirby, like, eating an eyeball or some, you know, like, other bloody shit. Just being, like, oh, Kirby's not as kid-friendly as you thought. Just, like, being edgy. It's like okay. That's, he doesn't need to have like blood everywhere to be awesome. It's it's just it's, it's weird. Yeah. Like it's 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 just edgy for edge's sake. Yeah. Or like, I think like most of the fan art of Kirby is either, 
you know, Kirby obviously doing, you know, cutesy shit, or you, you then get, like, the, you know, quote-unquote cursed shit, where they just, like, draw Kirby, but with, like, you know, human legs or something. Yeah, I saw a bunch of that when I was looking up references for this. Yeah, you'll you'll just see, like, a bunch of, like, you know, meme images like that, mm. where it's just Kirby with, like, you know, like, thin, like, sexy lady legs or something, like, haha. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. I also saw a picture of King DDD. I think this was actually an official picture where he's just buff as heck. Oh yeah, that's an official picture. Here, I'll, yeah. I'll find that for you. So, um, Kirby Star Allies, uh, he was also brainwashed in that game. He gets he gets brainwashed a lot. He seems that's to, just, yeah. That's just kind of his thing. Like, in Kirby Star Allies, there are, like, it starts out with there being, like, a bunch of, um, like, evil stars that crash to the ground that have, like, you know, evil auras coming off them and, like, make whatever, like, goes near them get, like, pissed off and evil, you know? Um, and, you know, that happens to King DDD, even though, like, even without the evil aura, he probably would have still, like, stolen all the food he did and been kind of a prick. Yeah. Uh, but for really whatever reason, um, I sent you a picture of him. You can like show it on the screen. Mm. But for whatever reason, <laughs> yeah, that's that the picture aura, I saw. Yeah, for whatever reason, that evil aura also just makes him fucking jacked for whatever reason. <laughs> like for for no discernible reason, he just gets beefed up to shit, and like tries to beat you with his massive gorilla arms. God. I, like every every time they get he gets brainwashed, they at least try and like change up what he's doing for the boss fight. Mm. But sometimes, sometimes it's just weird. Yeah, cause I saw that I saw that picture and I was like, what had to have happened for that to exist? Literally, he just like sniffed some evil air. <laughs> oh god! Like. I I can I cannot give you a better explanation than that <laughs> because it just kind of happens. If people want to get muscles, they should just sniff some evil air. I mean, really, just like just go just go get some of that really nasty cheese from the store, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it's 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 oh, it's just weird. It is like. Weird. Most of the times he gets brainwashed, he's just, you know, he's, he's literally just King DDD. He's trying to beat you with his hammer. Um, but, like, you know, then you get some ones where he's, like, wearing the metal mask. Or, like, other stuff. But for this game, they just decided, like, yeah, let's make him a fucking gorilla. Like, 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 literally... Like, literally at one point, he, like, just starts swinging around from pillars that are in his arena and, like, throwing food at you. So, literally like a gorilla. Yeah, exactly. I I don't know why that's the direction they went with that, but, you know. Just a lot of, like, weird stuff in these games, and people were like, yeah, let's frick it, let's do it. Like, I kind of like that, where it's like, you know, they're trying to come up with new stuff to do every Kirby game, and instead of, like, keeping it, like, similar to the last ones, they just kind of, like, change it up however the fuck they want. Like, yeah, like, let's fuck it. Fuck it. We'll make King Dedede, like, have a gorilla form. That's fine. Like, in Mario, if they want to change things up, they'll give, like, Bowser, like, a second form or something. But in Kirby, it's just like, nah, fuck it, we'll just make him a gorilla. Or, like, here's a new Eldritch God. Yeah, there just seems to be, like, so much variety. Yeah. Um... Oh yeah, another thing I wanted to talk about with Kirby Air Ride. Um, the vehicle options are just fucked. And what is that? Like, they, they tried to do a thing where it's like they make every every single one unique with how it controls or like other stuff like that. So it's like you have one that's like a Batmobile star. Like it's like a bat-shaped star. It's like all purple and dark and you know, yada yada. Um... It does more, like, damage if you crash into other, like, other players or enemies with it and all that. But it's got, like, average speed. 
Um, there's like the soap star or like sud star that's like really slippery. It kind of like it kind of goes fast, but because it's so slippery, it like you know, just shit at corners. Um, and then the most fucked up one is this like diamond one that like goes super crazy fast, but it can only turn if you completely stop it, and it stops like on a dime. That sounds difficult to control. Okay, well, no, here's the problem, is that if you're playing with AI, and one of them gets that randomly or something, you're mm -hmm. just fucked. Because the AI knows exactly where to turn, and just Oof. do it in, like, an instant. Oh, no, So, yeah. like, yeah, so if you're just playing, like, an AI match, and one of them, like, gets that, just go fuck yourself, you're done. Like, you either have to hope you can fucking kill them before the race is over, or hope you get second place at least. Well, it's probably good when you're playing against real people, though. Yeah, like, like whenever I was younger and I was playing with like my like you know childhood friends and stuff, if they wanted to play Kirby Air Ride, I would like I would do this fucked up thing where I would tell them like, oh yeah, that one's like the fastest one in the game, you know, and they would all pick it, and I want to tell them the part where they can't like turn without stopping. So, like, they would try and, like, drift around a corner or something like that and just fucking, like, scoot along. And it's like, bro, why does this fucking star suck? You said it was the fastest. And I was like, yeah, it's the fastest. What do you mean? That's, that's <laughs> great. That must be why, why they kept it in. Oh. Kirby Air Ride also has, like, an actual, like, competitive scene right now. Really? Yeah, like you can, you can. There's like a whole website dedicated to like a mod you can get that lets you play online with other people, and like they do their own like tourneys and like stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's like, like Kirby Air Ride is like the most interesting and fun like kart racing game you could fucking get, and it sucks that like Nintendo just fucking forgot about it. Yeah, that's really sad when that happens to older games. Like, they kind of just seems like how it is for a lot of the fucking, like, Nintendo games. Mm. Is that, like, they'll make an interesting game and then just kind of forget about it and make, like, new Super Mario, like, 57. Yeah, I feel that. It, uh, it sucks. Yeah. Speaking of competitive stuff, though, does, um... Is there, like, a good speedrunning... Um, scene with Kirby. Uh, I I've, I don't really like watch speedrunning that much, mm. but I can I can almost assume that there are people who have like learned like the true arenas and that kind of thing and can just beat it in like five minutes. Yeah, that sounds like, awesome. I think there was a, like an extra like little bonus mode in Triple Deluxe or one of the other ones where you get to play as Meta Knight and you pretty much go through all the same areas as Kirby did, but you're like, um, like it's timing you. Oh, so, so you there's go, like, an in-game timer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it doesn't count down, but it just counts like um, how fast you can get through it and like, you know, gives you a little record at the end of it and all that. That's cool. Yeah. Like, uh, here, let me see. Uh, okay. Here, what, what's a what's a speed run for Kirby Superstar Ultra like? Uh, so yeah, on this like official speed running website, I guess that like you know keeps track of all like speed running records and shit like that. Mm. Um, the top ranked like official speed run on this for Kirby Superstar Ultra on the DS, um, they beat it in two hours. Um, Kirby Superstar Allies, how about that? Uh, the top one for that, uh, apparently from three weeks ago, uh, was in an hour and 21 minutes. And as someone that has played the games, what are these times like to you? Well, it kind of depends, because it's like every Kirby, Kirby game has like that secret collectible in every level that like, you know, you're supposed to like collect every one of from every world and like, mm -hmm. a, like a bonus thing at the end. But if you're if you're just fucking blasting through the game, you can beat any of them in like, like maybe five hours, if you're just mm -hmm. like going through all the little regular levels and all that, you know. Yeah. So it's like seeing like a no glitch speed run like that. That's that's pretty crazy. 
because I can't imagine playing a Kirby game and like you know hearing the good music and like seeing the cute enemies and just like fucking blasting through it fast as I can. Yeah, it's it's bizarre seeing like your your favorite games getting speed run like that. Yeah, like I think I think the other thing with it is that like there's not that many um like pretty much all the Kirby games are pretty fucking solid like technically wise. Like, there's no, like, you know, that you can't, like, clip through the level and, like, reach the final boss or some shit, you know? So, like, you just kind of have to play through the fucking game. Yeah. Like, you'll see you'll see mm -hmm. speedruns where it's, like, you know, oh, yeah, I beat the game in, like, nine minutes. By, like, you know, I like I held up a chair in front of this wall and clipped through, like, you know, reached max velocity and just fucking bolted through the world or some shit, you know? Yeah, there's some really broken games that are just amazing for speedruns, like Sonic yeah. 06. <laughs> God. Yeah. Like, yeah, Sonic 06 or, like, Skyrim, you know? Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, but I think I think Kirby games, or, like, other games like that would probably be, like, a speedrunning nightmare because there's nothing like that you can do. Yeah, like, I was actually, um... The games that I really love are uh, Sly Raccoon. And I don't know oh, yeah. if it's because people aren't really speedrunning them, or if they're just so solid that it's hard to find glitches, but like, Sly 2 and Sly 3, like, they have really long speedruns that don't seem like... I know, yeah. Yeah, they don't seem very glitched at all. Yeah. And, like, the other thing about, like, speedruns, and especially Kirby speedruns, is that, like, there might be a speedrun for, like, like, 100% collecting all the special stuff. And then one without that, you know? Yeah, loads of different categories. Yeah. I I saw a, I, I saw a like a speed run for Kirby Air Ride and I have no god idea how that would work. Because Oh, okay, apparently the the, the fastest speed run for Kirby Air Ride was sixteen minutes. Is that really good? I have no idea because I don't know, I don't know what that's counting. Like, oh. is that just like, is that just beating every track? Oh yeah, okay. The air, the the speed run is just they beat every single track in sixteen minutes, and there's like eight tracks. It's like I don't know I don't know how I don't know how good of a speed run that is, but okay. But well, another thing that um. Sakurai put in from like Kirby Air Ride into like the other Smash Bros. games is that there's this little like um, a checkbox system where it's like you do like an in game achievement and it'll like unlock something or like you know other stuff like that. Mm. And with Kirby Air Rides, you like do one of those and it'll unlock like a special like special vehicle or like another track or like a, a, a color for Kirby, you know? Yeah, and like I would not want to imagine what like trying to speed run that shit looks like like a hundred percent speed run yeah well because i think literally i think one of the achievements for it is like play the game for like 500 hours or something oh yeah so that's like something like something ridiculous like that yeah that's impossible then to do fast oh like jesus like i think um, God, what was it? Like, unlocking Meta Knight, you have to kill, like, 500 enemies or something like that. And it's, like... And it's not counting, like, the just going in the Debolition Derby and just, like, doing that for, like, ever. That's literally just, like, doing regular races and killing, like, 100 or so enemies like that. Like, apparently a 100% speed run of Kirby with all 120 checkboxes is almost three hours long. Oh. So I think I'm I think I might have exaggerated the like playing for however many total hours. But I can't remember. Hmm. Three hours is it... still quite a bit for a speed run. Oh yeah. I think I think I was thinking of the Smash Bros melee where it's like you have to play for like like five hours straight or something to unlock Mewtwo. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think whenever I saw that, like, so that's how you unlock Mewtwo, I was just like, oh, okay. And just turned off my TV, but left the GameCube going. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've seen that meme a couple of places. 
Oh, is like there. There's so much weird stuff with Kirby. Like, oh, like um, in Kirby Air Ride during like the city trial stuff, you can um, collect three parts for like two special vehicles, and like unlock them. And one is the most piece of shit fucking vehicle you can get in the game. That um, you have to like hold down the brake button to charge up the gas for it and then it goes but doing that takes like a solid 10 seconds so it's like by the time you're done everybody's left you in the fucking dirt and then the other one is like the fastest in the game and can also like fly infinitely so it's just busted yeah like they really they really like experimented with all the vehicles and it was fun I like how the drawing's turning out. Like, you're doing a lot of good, like, shading and all that. Thank you. It's almost done. Nice. I, I'm not the best art critic, so I, you know... I'm not, I'm not, I can't, I'm not gonna be able to say, like, like, uh, oh, the contrast of this piece is really exquisite. <laughs> well, that's okay. It's just kind of, um, you know, something fun to draw while we chat about yeah. this, isn't it? Yeah. So it doesn't even need any of that. Oh yeah, I should also put a little disclaimer. Um, all my Kirby lore, memory, like Kirby stuff I've said, has been completely from memory. So I might have like fucked up a tidbit or two there. So like no, nobody, nobody come in the comments like roasting me, please. Yeah, I, that's my best. that's understandable. It's kind of it's kind of like if somebody like told you to teach a class, but like only from memory. Well, I think that's that's kind of. What makes it interesting it's like i have all this stuff in my brain about kirby and i need to get it out <laughs> yeah but like the thing with kirby is that like you have to explain like the six eldritch gods that you fight in like all the games and shit like that yeah exactly like man if kirby lord was just like hey this guy knocked over kirby's cake and kirby went and beat him up that would be 10 times easier but you know well from what gotta, you said gotta... that's part of it as well yeah, like the like the surface level of it, I guess. Mm. But man, fucking <laughs> Kirby is the like Dark Souls of video game lore. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I think you can absolutely say that. <laughs> I mean, Dark Souls has its own interest in lore as well. Yeah, I think I think mostly for Dark Souls, it's just like. Kirby is less confusing than Dark Souls lore. Yeah. Like you'll 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 play through a Kirby game and be and be like, oh, that was fun. But you'll play through a Dark Souls game for the first time and be like, what the fuck did I just do? <laughs> and then you read the lore and it's like, oh. Like I think I think I played Dark Souls three as my first Dark Souls game, and I had completely no clue what was going on. For like the entire game, but I was like, "Hey, this is fun." It seems like one of those games that is just like meant to just be really confusing, unless you like pay loads of attention to all the lore to this. Yeah, and I mean, even then, I guess for like Dark Souls, like even if you do pay attention to the lore bits, you're still probably gonna be like kind of confused. Yeah. But yeah, I think this drawing is done now. Unless you, as the Kirby aficionado, think there's anything I need to add. No, it looks pretty good. Like like I said, there is literally no way you could mess up a drawing of like any Kirby characters. And that is that is reass very reassuring for me to hear as someone that's drawn them for the first time. <laughs> oh yeah, like I think like I think you like pretty much captured the whole like the dynamic between King DDD and Kirby right there. Yeah, that's that's just kind of how like I thought they would interact from just their character designs. Like they they nailed the designs that perfectly that you can just look at the two of them and be like, oh, I bet Kirby annoys the fucking shit out of King DDD. Yeah, it's it's great. It's just it just seems to be a really good character design, honestly. Oh yeah, uh, fuck! I love King DDD. He's the fucking best. <laughs> like I think I think in like all the Smash Bros. games he's in. Like, whenever you lay down as him, he just does, like, the fucking, like, draw me, like, one of your French girls pose. 
<laughs> oh, that's such like a... He's, he's, yeah. He's a, very, he's a very pompous little fucking penguin. He is. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, a little tidbit I forgot about the fucking show is that he has, like, a New York accent in the show for whatever reason. That is not what I expected, but also surprisingly <laughs> fitting. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's fitting. And then also Meta Knight speaks in, like, a very stereotypical, like, Spanish, like, handsome man accent, you know? Hmm. Like Zorro. Oh, yeah. I could see that, yeah. Yeah, but then you get in-game and, like, literally n neither of them ever talk. Do they, like... Do they do, like, little kind of grunts, or...? Yeah, they, they make their own noises, like... King Diddy has, like, a kind of deeper voice that he, like... Like, he just kind of, like, honk noises every once in a while just because he's, like, a bird. Yeah. And then Meta Knight... Meta Knight sounds like a man. Like, he's, he just has that voice. Mm. Like, he doesn't make he doesn't make any, like, you know, weird creature noises. Like, he just says, like, ha, or yeah, like, you know, like Link. What about Kirby? Oh, Kirby. Kirby has, like, one of the most recognizable voices, which is, like, a high-pitched, like, kid, pretty much. Yeah, now that you say that, I'm thinking of it in my brain. And I'm like, yeah. oh, like, you know what Kirby sounds like? Oh, what? You know, you know Kimasabu. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it kind of sounds like that. <laughs> Like, he, he obviously never talks in the show. Like, I think the most he says is, like, random, like, baby babbling. Or, like, uh, Poyo. Which is just his, like, catchphrase. Mm. Uh, fucking... But yeah, that's, that's Kirby for you. Yeah, that's, that's great. I feel... I feel enlightened in a way. And I'd love to go and play one of those games now. Oh yeah, there's plenty of them to choose from. Like, you can get like half of them all on an emulator, or just like a 3DS. Mm. So it's pretty easy to play any of them. Yeah. Are there, are there any on the Switch that are good? Um, I think, I think the only like mainline one on the Switch is Star Allies. Mm. Um, and that's, I mean, that's already pretty good. Like, that's like. You know, one, again, one of the, like, I keep saying, like, one of the best games of the series because it's, like, there's no bad ones. Yeah. So you just kind of have to go with what you like. Um, but yeah, Kirby Strallis is fun. It's got, like, a, a lot of, like, multiplayer stuff you could do and all that. So, yeah. So that's awesome. I could just start anywhere and, according to you, they'd all be a good game. Oh, yeah, there's, like, there, there's no, like, continuing story or, like, anything like that, really. Mm. Like, every game has its own, like, contained story. You don't have to worry about, like, the Kirby timeline or anything. That's awesome. Yeah. So, shall we leave it there for now? Yeah, I think that's a good stopping point. Absolutely. So, thanks for listening to this episode of Draw.